Yeah, well, I get a lot of uh, comments and people talk to me, uh, mates talk to me about bit Chelsea prison. And it's, nah, there's no way that he could be like that way. Put, listen, I was there for 76. I was there till the fire of uh, 78, yeah? And Chelmsford prison uh, was the best prison that I've ever been to, yeah? I've been to quite a few prisons, yeah? Um, I come from there, from a 1074. I come from uh, all round prisons from, called a 1074, uh, and I've got looked after. I went to Chelmsford Prison, I was really looked after. I never think I could possibly want there. Yeah? People like Ronnie Bender and, you know, those sort of people looked after me, mate. You know, and I was, I, and, and, and I thank for, thank for them for the rest of my life. Even though uh, Ronnie Bender's dead, rest in peace, mate. But a lot of them looked after me. Um, my best mate, Toby Ludlow, he looked after me. He was the first one to uh, <coughs> come and see me and bought me a big dinner. You know, and from there, he just went mad. I met a guy from B-Wing uh, called Sid Tomlinson. I started talking to him, become a mate of mine. I come over to my cell. My cell was just a plain, not a plain cell, but just a cell like, you know, what everybody had, you know. And I decided to make myself comfortable, like a proper bedroom. So we started up getting... Uh, Cupboards, units, and rep from 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 the uh, from a cell that has all these broken broken lockers and stuff, and we got a saw, yeah, saw mate, uh, hammer, nails, screws, the lot, yeah, and started sawing them up. I made a unit from one end of the cell to the other end of the cell, a proper unit, like a wardrobe in there. Every, honestly, I'm not joking, mate, and and I could put my radio in there, and also I could put my uh, my record player, yeah, I had everything made for him to fit in, yeah? It was mad. And, like, and I also got a, um, an armchair from the officer's mess. Uh, my mate Sid Thompson worked in there. He got it out, he got it, something I didn't get, they didn't care, mate. Uh, I remember Jack said, coming up to me one day and saying, look, um, we've got visitors coming around, coming around the uh, prison. Uh, we don't want anyone to see your prison, your cell, right? You know what I mean? It, it, it's not on, mate. So what we're going to put a sign outside, this cell is being fumigated, and they're going to put a big thing over the spot, over the, uh, the sort they're looking, and you can't go in there today. You know what I mean? You've got to go somewhere else's cell or whatever it is. I'm like, no problem, go. So, uh, and then after that, I mean, it was just, everything was just nice. Um, met some proper, proper people, you know, uh, Ronnie Bender, uh, Jimmy Tibbs, John, Johnny Tibbs, Robert Tibbs, uh, I met all the Tibbses, uh, young Jimmy, the fighter, the boxer, fa fantastic people, the old man Jim, fantastic people, the old man Jim, was a lot, he's, he, he was a man mountain, massive hands, uh, nice guy, just a pleasant people, mate, you know, and, the papers make to be, make them out to be something that they ain't. You know, maybe they are, but they're not like, you know, when you get to meet them, you can't believe they're just nice, nice people. You know, and Ronnie Bender with the craze. And you think to myself, wow, you know, and this guy is a gentleman, mate. This guy is a gentleman. Uh, anything that I wanted, he has so much in his cell. I mean, Ronnie Bender was well respected in there. Um, they called him a captain. He was a captain of every team in there. You know, uh, all the car schools were in his cell. Mickey Greens and all them people, Dixons, uh, Tibbses, you know, uh, they used to come in there and play cards. And there was a lot of money passed over the table. Loads of money, you know. Uh, it, you know, it, there wasn't a lot of cash. As such, maybe a couple hundred quid. You know, but I suppose there might be, must have been more than that in the, in the prison, in our wing at, you know, at that time. Uh, but a lot of it was done by, uh, you know, going to visit, send someone this money, send that someone that money into their private cash and all that sort of things. But they used to play poker in Kaluki. Uh, the money that used to pass, mate, it was unbelievable. I used to go in there and sit down and watch it, you know, I mean, and, you know, and, and, and it, these people, these people are proper gangsters. And, but they're just nice, you know. Talk to them. It, Ronnie Bender had um, a cell like a swine, yeah? It was like a swine, he had all these things hanging from the ceiling. He had these massive grubby cushions. I used to go in there and I used to do lots of neck rolls uh, all my, all my, from, from it, you know, to build my neck up. 
And yeah, Ronnie Bender, mate, you go in there, coffee, tea, cake, you know, he used to get, put one, he used to get uh, Ronnie Malloy out of the, out of the pantry, uh, who, who was involved with the silver bullion, Ronnie Malloy, and come out and buy and give him cakes, because he was in charge of the pantry, so all the cakes and stuff used to go in there for the officer's mess and all them sort of things. Ronnie Malloy, um, he was, he was a man that earned a fortune out of out of uh, out of the uh, kitchen, not that he needed it because uh, he was involved in a silver bullion. They reckon that they hid, uh, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds of a silver bullion, yeah. And everybody talked to him, him, him like, where you buried one? You know what I mean? Hey, yeah, you know what I mean? But it must have been terrible uh, being in prison and buried all that silver, and the amount of flats that went up in. 10, 15 years, you never know they're going to dig a silver up, you know what I mean? So, Ronnie was always checking it. Uh, Ronnie Malloy, Ronnie Bender, uh, Jimmy Tibbs, uh, they run the kitchen. They run it. I mean, you know, Ronnie Malloy got all the sugar out, tea bags out, uh, not tea bags, uh, tea, uh, coffee, milk, chocolate, anything like that, Ronnie Malloy would get out. He had license as such because he used to look after the screws, give them their parcels, and you know, and the screws just let him go. Just let him walk through, big pouch over his over his over his trousers, just crack on, mate. Like, you know, put the owls on, crash. And Ronnie Bender used to come out of that kitchen with the screw that he was on the works with, come out of the kitchen with legs of lamb, rolls of beef, pork chops, steak, kidneys, all sorts of stuff. But once or twice a week, used to go in there and get all the stuff out. Uh, they used to cook in there nearly every night uh, in terms of prison. Uh, but when I say cooking, I mean cooking. I mean, you know, you've got Mickey Green, you've got Tony Edlin, uh, my mate's dad. Uh, Tony, I like Tony, mate. And they'd cook proper meals, you know, proper, proper meals, like, you know, uh, baked potatoes, cabbages, cauliflower, peas, carrots, all them sort of things, you know, the meat, chicken, chicken, lamb, roast beef, anything. They would cook it every night, you know. Weekends, uh, they'd always have a roast, always have a roast, and they wasn't tight of it. Uh, get tables out in, in, in the on the wing, and people could come down and have something to eat. There was not tight people, you know. And I like the way they looked after uh, people that are in prison for a long, long time, you know what I mean? Been in prison for like ages, you know. Uh, when Frankie Fraser come down, he couldn't believe it, mate. You could see that he was shocked. His sons, I think, I think I'm quite sure his David was there. It was either David or Patrick, and they might even both be there. Both have been there, yeah. Uh, you got the old man come in. I mean, Frankie Fraser, uh, the name, that name's a legend. I mean, it's a big legend, you know. Same with all the others, Tibbses, Ronnie Bender. Alan Dixon, all, all them people are big legends, yeah? But Frankie Fraser, he's the, one of the biggest legends because everybody knows Frankie Fraser, you know? And Frank uh, was a man that didn't want anything. When I say didn't want anything, he didn't want anything given to him, yeah? But, you know, it's it just, it was that way. But obviously, so come on, you know, come on, Dad, have a dinner, this, that, and the other, and he wouldn't take it, he lived. He lived the life that, that, that lived the life, I'm in prison and I can do it, yeah, that sort of thing, yeah. And his cell, uh, he had nothing in his cell, nothing at all, you know, but every day <coughs> all the stuff would be put on his bed and he would scrub his floors, his walls, if he could get to the ceilings, he'd scrub them too. Uh, every cell had a night, the old bow, bow cells, you know, big high ceilings. And yeah, like, um, Frank had it all, mate. Frank had it all as far as uh, anything he wanted, he had. But he didn't want nothing, if it makes sense. He had everything, but nothing, you know? Um, his kids would always go mad at his dad, you know, dad. And then now again, he'd take a dinner and he'd eat it, you know, go and his son. He didn't really congregate as much, yeah? Um, obviously, so, uh, you know, Ronnie Bender was in the, with the craze, which. Uh, uh, Fraser was with the Richardsons and the Craze. So Ronnie Bender and Frankie Fraser got on quite well. 
uh, same as the Tibbses. They got on well with Frank. Uh, Dixon's got on well with Frank. Uh, everybody, everybody in there got on well with Frankie Fraser. And what was really exciting was when Frank went out to the field, uh, I was in a rugby team uh, with all my pals, because some good people, mate, uh, on my rugby team, you know, and you know, people like Mickey Blackmore, Roy Atkins, uh, you know, people that are names, yeah? Peter Kelly, not Peter Kelly, sorry, Peter Lyons. I mean, um, these people that on my rugby team, on the rugby team I played with, they're all proper faces, yeah? And, you know, there was a guy in there, a black guy called Clarence Carr. Clarence Carr was the fastest guy that I've ever seen in my whole life. His geezer used to play rugby with us in the wing. He got, he got hold of that ball, mate. Uh, there was no way they could stop him, you know. And if they did, try to bash him up as such because he was so fast, that would be the last person they bashed up because we'd smash him to pieces, you know what I mean? So, you know, he always looked after Clarence, mate, uh, you know, when he played with us. Uh, Ronnie Bender, he was captain of the rugby team. He played a couple of times. He always said he had dodgy legs. <laughs> you know, he wouldn't play with us, mate. It was, it was a real hard, hard team. And, you know, when you got people like even Kenny Beagle, Kenny Beagle, all these, like, these hit, free hitmen, proper hitmen, like Roy Atkins, Mickey Blackmore, Kenny Beagle, they all worked, they all was on the rugby team. And they all played together. It's crazy, isn't it? You know what I mean? And they all got assassinated as such, don't they? You know, they all got killed, didn't they? But over in Holland and Kenny Beagle was done in the car park, in the hospital. You know, and you know, you can't believe it that I was with all them people. You know what I mean? And, you know, like, it's, I mean, there was a guy called, I don't know if anybody knows this guy called Joe Lott, yeah? Names come back to me now and again. That's why I had to do my 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 my, uh, my little video. The guy's called Joe Lot, um, ginger fella, played the accordions, yeah, and yeah, yeah, he, he was allowed all that in there, yeah. He played the accordion. He used to play a record called "I Want to Go to Heaven for the Weekend," you know, and see my mum, you know, up in there, you know, and all that game. He was quite cheerful. But every Sunday he play "I Want to Go to Heaven for a Weekend" and all that, and yeah. Brilliant singer. So if anybody knows Joe Lot, uh, try and get hold of him to give me, uh, give me, send me a message or something. Old Joe, eh? And uh, it was the other. It was, there was a few people in there. Uh, good, good people, you know. Uh, when I say good, I mean what's his, uh, what's his name? Um, oh bloody hell! Do you know like, his names that I'm, that I'm trying to Lou Swallow, Lou Swallow, Lou Swallow. Um, I've said it before, the greatest painter that I've ever seen. Uh, this guy uh, done a painting in his cell. It was so big, obviously so, that I, uh, obviously I get it out of the cell, but when, it's after, when the fire happens, I should imagine all the screws took all the paintings. Uh, but this painting was must have been worth loads, mate. It was a painting of a scenery, yeah? A big houses, like flats and things like that. But everything was done by faces. Uh, it was must have been, I don't know, thousands of faces in it. And the way he done it, it must be worth a fortune, you know. And he was, he looked like Rasputin. Uh, the guy played rugby with us. Uh, nice guy, Joe. Uh, he was a nice guy, sorry. Nice guy he was, Lou Swallow. And he used to, as I told you before, one of his little tricks was uh, with the eggs. You know, he used to put boiled eggs up his bum and lay them on a Sunday, every Sunday, two boiled eggs. Uh, and then he goes to the centre and he bend down whoop, whoop, and lay the eggs. And he's lunatic, you know what I mean? And it's just like a nice, nice guy, you know? And like, who's the, there's one, there's one that, um, he's now, he's now a parson. He's now a parson. You see him quite a bit on, on YouTube. I get his name. Uh, he was in Chelsea Prison when I was there. He was in C-Wing. No, sorry, he was in B-Wing. And this guy could have a fight, mate. Uh, what was his name? I forget his name. He had a little tip in my tongue there. Uh, this guy could have a fight. And now he's a parson. Uh, fair play to him, mate. He's changed his life completely. You know, he's right as a god. Uh, 
that this guy could really march on. And, you know, big guy, big powerful guy, mate. And there was a lot, a lot of people in there petrified of him when he was about. When he come from, when he come from B wing onto C wing, a lot of people kept their mouth shut, mate. He, they knew that he was a, uh, he was a bit nutty, you know. And another guy in there, Peter Lyons, uh, my pal, he was prop with me. Uh, big powerful guy, mate. Uh, dangerous guy. Used to knife so many people. Him and Mickey, Mickey, I know I said it before. Him and Mickey Blackmore used to fight. It was to stab each other. It's mad. It's mad. But you know, Mickey, Mickey Blackmore is one of the nicest guys uh, that I know that I met in prison. Um, you know, um, very powerful guy. Very powerful guy. Very dizzy. He was always digging about. Um, but he he was dangerous. If you upset him. He, you knew that you could gonna have a well he could have a well and he was dangerous i.e. I, stabbing it to death mate. He didn't give a monkeys, you know. Even in prison he didn't care. You know, and I wish I wish I could remember all the names uh, all them names that that was were, were there, you know. Uh, Togi though there was a lot of bad things said about Togi. But all the bad things said about him, there's good things as well, mate. I mean in prison uh, he looks after me, mate. He, he when he looks after me, give me what I want, got me what I wanted. And the greatest thing that he ever did to me, uh, Togi, was that Christmas, little day potter, and they all give me uh, a pipe, a little brass pipe, and put opium in it, opium black in it, and got me so stoned that when I went to the Christmas party to see all the kids, I had to get out of there, mate. Uh, the vicar in there fit the life out of me, um, you know, and then I got back to my cell. I hid everything, all my Stanley knives, my nails. Everybody's got tools in there, weapons in there. So I had my Stanley knife, my nails, uh, put Pink Floyd on and Led Zeppelin on and, and the doors on. It was like madness in there because you've got your record player. And the record in there uh, would last, it seems, Forever. You get right into it, um, it gets right into your nut, you know. Then you got Togi and all the others outside my door go, ooh, like that. I do others, mate. I couldn't go to work. Uh, my cell was spinning. My cell was spinning. Wow, that was the worst feeling I've ever had in my life. And it seemed to last forever. Uh, when they opened me up in the morning um, to go to work, I couldn't go. I just said, look, I'm not very well. I don't feel good. I was still buzzing from the beginning of the afternoon to the next morning. I was like still buzzing, you know, and it was a bad, bad feeling. And my mouth, I must have drunk, drunk that much water, mate. But anyway, um, when like, when I was in, in the power and lifting team in there, uh, you know, I met some Mickey, Mickey Francis there, met a guy called Mickey Francis. Mick Francis, uh, nice guy, mate. I met him in there. Powerful, 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 really. And there's a couple, there's a black guy in there, powerful. I wish I could remember all the guys on my team, on my powerlifting team. But Kenny Beagle, um, he was one of the guys on my powerlifting team, on our powerlifting team, rather. And he was very strong, Ken. Uh, fantastic squatter. Uh, great deadlifter and a great bencher, uh, but he was one of the people that if you pissed him off, he would just okay. Maybe that's what he maybe because he, he he was that person, that hitman person. He didn't like to be pissed off. You couldn't piss him off, yeah. And when I pissed him off one day, he went well okay. This went on the on down from the stage, jumped off. And then started his own things, doing his own uh, limpet lifting, pressing. He had a body, mate. He was just cut, cut to pieces, yeah? And then uh, and then you got uh, the best governor, the chief that you could possibly have. They were the best ever. When I say the best ever, they was the best ever. I mean, for a chief and a governor uh, to get... Ballerinas, I've not said it before, but Chelsea Prison 
you know, people that ask me what is about, I'm telling them, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe there could be four or five people that I'm talking to that I'm telling about, yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, and this chief and governor um, would had ballerinas come in into the vicarage, and, and, and that's where the fire caught, caught light in the church, in the centre, uh, from the library, right next door to it. And yeah, it's like, and they got ballerinas in there. And who could believe that? You got ballerinas absolutely all dancing with tutus. And you got all these guys that got big birds. And you got these birds. Listen, mate, it was more wanking that night than any night in any prison, was it? And then the greatest thing that you could ever possibly have was when uh, they come in, uh, Sex Pistols, and they come in and they try to wind us all up, so bash all the screws up, and Sex Pistols nearly got killed, uh, and they made a record about us at Chelsea Prison, and it's like, you know, and it's good to know that they made a record about us, you know what I mean? <laughs> they took the piss out of us, but, you know, that's, that's what they did. Um, Chelmsford Prison, mate, um, was the best prison. And then, you know, the biggest liberty uh, that ever happened in Chelmsford Prison was when there was a fire. Um, you know, I know when I say it was liberty, Chelmsford Prison was burnt from the centre uh, where the, where the, where the, uh, where the church was and the library, yeah? It was a brand new church that's been built. Um, whoever burnt it, it ruined everybody's chances of getting out quick or whatever it was, because everybody was just enjoying chunks of prison, no trouble, you know, so there was never, never, no, no bad reports about people. Like, it's good to be, have a prison like that so everybody can get out. <coughs> so, sorry. <coughs> so, when the fire happens, and the screws come down every cell, and you've got to get out now. You can't take that with you. You've got to get out now. Just get out your cell now. And as people are getting out of the cell, they're banging the door, yeah? So you can imagine uh, when everyone was in, we was all in the uh, visiting room, yeah? Uh, some was out in the yard, but mostly was in, in the visiting room. Like people uh, on low cat, in B wing, they was maybe outside in the, in the yard. But people like us on C wing, big sentences, was put into the visiting room, yeah? And all them people, me being one, because I was down the gym when it burnt, and that was where all, you could see it burning, because the centre's not far from the gym. <coughs> all the sex offenders and nonsense were crazy, going crazy, we were saying, burn, you burn, 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 you know? And when it went up, and all the people that have been in prison, in me too, that have been in prison for a long, long time. You had all your letters, your photographs, all your history is in that cell. Is in that cell, yeah? And you've got to leave it all in that cell and you've got to go to the visiting room or wherever you have to go to, yeah? And everyone's going mad, let me go back to my cell. They're going, not yet, you will be able to go there. And, and then uh, this killed us all. That, and from, the, from there, the police come in and it was just packed, you know, the visit room was packed and they started chipping us out to different places. But you can imagine um, losing your life, losing people have been in there for, in prison for such a long time, you know, and you've got your letters, your photographs, things, your record player, you, you know, all your different, different records, uh, everything, jewellery, uh, everything was in there, gold, money that you left in your cell, jewellery you left in your cell, rings, watches that you left in your cell that doesn't even belong to you. It's not even a property sheet, so they just take it. You can imagine how much stuff went, you know, like Ronnie Bender's cell, like that was a, uh, like Aladdin's cave. All the other people that do all the pictures, paint the pictures, they're there getting their money, their puff. You can imagine all the drugs they found in there. It's madness, mate. You know, and everybody's in, in, in the... Uh, visit room going absolutely crazy because they're leaving their life behind and the screws and the old bill didn't give a monkeys because screws coming from all different sorts all different prisons 
and they was all sorting out where we got to go, and there was murders. I mean, some screws got clumped, some screws got right-handed, some people where they wasn't even known to be in Chelmsford Prison, just come and got Larry, and they were getting clumps. And so when prison people, I was one of the, I was the biggest guy in Chelmsford Prison, I was massive, yeah? Uh, so they couldn't put me in a in, in a in a cell in a black boy. You had eight one side, maybe six ones, eight, eight, eight. But it was loads of wagons, yeah. And they put me in the middle of the uh, of the of the walkway on a on a on a on a chair, handcuffed to a screw, handcuffed to another screw, yeah. Because they couldn't get me. In, I was too big. You couldn't. That's the truth, mate. They couldn't get me in there. So, you know, you imagine you're going now. Uh, you're leaving all your life all your possessions in Chelsea Prison. Everything that you've ever had, letters, photographs, record players, radios, money, drugs, jewellery, is all left behind. So when the fire was put out, and believe it or not, our wing, C wing, I've got to say it, there's only a couple of cells, you could see my cell from the centre, yeah, in C wing, uh, you can, I mean, f there's only a couple of cells that caught light, you know. All the rest wasn't, you know, because it was the centre. It was around the centre, and C room was close to the centre as such, you know. B room was more further back. Uh, the nonces, where the nonces was A wing, uh, that caught light because it's over the centre anyway, but uh, who cares about them, you know what I mean? Uh, and, you know, and when you see the pictures of, of Chelsea Prison now, when the, after the fire and the governor's sit, standing there, I could, I could see my cell, you know, and it hadn't been touched. So all them cells down there, all the names, they they had a field day. They must have had it when they find, I mean, come on, a cell's a cell. It's only so big and it's all, you can only hide so much in a cell. You know, you can hide it um, easy and nice when you're living in there, yeah? But when you're not living in there and they come in your cell to, to, to rip it to pieces, they're gonna find everything. They're gonna find, even when they went to the toilets, even when they went downstairs to other rooms, other cells, and they find all the ooch, all the drinks. Ronnie Bender had so much drink in his cell, it was like a brewery, you know what I mean? Uh, fags, cigars, they must have, screws that come in from outside, Prisoners, when they went into cells like Ronnie Benners and my cells and other people's cells and looked at it, and they must have thought, what the fuck's going on here? You know, this is prison. You know, they're, they're, living, they're living a life like you're living out in the street. So why not? Why not? Why not? You know what I mean? They're doing Big Bird. You've done Big Bird. Why not? You know what I mean? And, you know, and then from that, people went to... Wandsworth, and they had to go a lot of them had to go through reception. Uh, most had to go through receptions. And, and then you take you know, all the bits and pieces that you've had in Chelmsford, like your clothes and things that had made and other things that you got sent in through, through, through the reception, where people work in the reception, get your box, get your nice clothes out and come bring it on the wing, yeah? But you're going to Wandsworth now, the biggest piss hole going, yeah? And you go in there and you've got clothes on, nice clothes, and they're taking it off you. And there was murders in reception, you know. And they, then you give you ones of clothes, looking like a tramp. All the times you've been in prison, in Chelsea prison, to go on a visit, you're looking crisp, you're smelling nicely, after shaving, everything you're getting in. I know people, you've got to remember, people were sending after shaving to the reception, the guy that works in reception, was taking all your property, getting you, put it in your property box, then he was taking it out and bringing it in for you. You have to shave and all the stuff you needed, yeah? So now you're in Wandsworth, they're taking everything from you, all your clothes, you're putting these shitty clothes on, and they're going to put you in a cell free up. <laughs> you've been two up, you've been in a single cell for 10 years. They're going to put you in a cell that smells lo lovely, got everything you want in there, tea, coffee, everything, yeah? They're going to put you in a cell with nothing in it, stinking, people smoking, no tea, nothing, no coffee, nothing in there, 
until you get shipped out. People would not stand for it. Cons would not stand for it, mate. I see beds, lockers, tables, guys being chucked out of the cell. But they couldn't handle it, mate. You couldn't handle it. Once the prison was packed with screws from other nicks, yeah, because of what happened, and they couldn't control it, mate. They couldn't control it. They had to let it go. They could not control it. Everything came over the landings, mate. They smashed the nick to pieces, Chelsea Prison. You know, you can imagine, can't you? What a, a, I can't believe the way it ended, yeah? The way it ended from everything, you got all your niceties that you could possibly have, and Chelsea Prison burnt down. Well, it didn't burn down. Part of it burnt down. Obviously, you can't stay there because of security reasons. But you're being shipped out. It's a piss holes like ones of. And the scrubs and the Ville and Brixton and all them places were well, not so much Brixton, but Wandsworth and even even size Winchester and all them places they were sending people out to. And you're going into them prisons and you're going in there as a prisoner's just come into prison, putting all their stinky, smelly clothes on you, with stains everywhere. You're getting in their cells with, with silly sheets and blankets and stinking and pissing shit. And there you are, just done 20 or 15 years of your bird, yeah? And you're going into that cell living like a pig. Anyway, bang, bang, rail. Nice one.